sold Amnesty International, I'm not having anything to do with them because all they're interested in is money. If they can't defend human rights in Australia, then what's the point of having you? Oh, well, you're not really getting shot or you know tortured. Oh no, not yet. Well, we can nip it in the bud before it gets in. We can stop it now, but they just want to keep it going, you know? Because it's the same with the homeless. Billion dollar industry. They don't want to cure homelessness. No, they just come weekends, they go home. The homeless doesn't eat on weekends. So of course, of, of course they want people to stay disempowered, of course they want people to be existing at a level where they're barely surviving. That's, that's what homelessness services do, they make people exist at that level where they're just managing to survive and they're relying on all of these different services that they have to go to appointments with every day of the yeah. fucking week just exactly. to s survive. And they're getting fifty. well, let's see, uh, when I went for a job with... Uh, Sydney City Mission, who didn't employ me because uh, I wasn't a Christian. Uh, the average wage then for a builder's labour was 600 bucks a week, and they were getting 750. And it was just a street cleaning exercise. Get rid of the drunks off the street. They weren't homeless, they were drunks. Alcoholics, that's all they're picking up. But hey, years of experience looking after people. Well, they employ big bloody Maori who happens to be a Christian because he attends church and he's got his lever from his reverend. You know, give me a break. How much does the head of the bloody thing get paid? If you go around to all these charitable organisations, the directors are on over half a million a year. You know, oh yeah, but I have to have that to do the work. No, you don't. This craps me. It really does. And if you look at what's happening with all of those, um, charities and stuff, it's it's kind of like the monopoly with Coles and Woolworths in the supermarket industry, except it's in the charity industry. All of the big NGOs are swallowing up all of the little NGOs so that there's no room for anything different or anything innovative or anything that might actually change something or help someone uh, what they keep <laughs> because on there's huge monopolies. What they keep on doing is hiring consultants. Consultants then go and steal or buy or purchase or the copyright on American studies. In public housing, 30% in each suburb comes out of the Frost and Brown stones. And all public private comes out of it. And then you've got the Katrina where they go and boot all the public housing tenants out of perfectly good housing and then demolish their building and use FEMA bloody to replace it. Down in Bay Street. God love a bloody Clover Moor, gives the land, which happens to be over the swamp land, to them because the buildings are falling apart because they've got subsidence. Well now they've cleaned, the, demolished the buildings, cleaned all the rocks off, guess what, they're sitting on top of sandstone. There's no way they subsided. But you know, oh well we're going to build more of them. Yeah right, since last year we've got 1,800 less how Less home housing units in New South Wales. Less. The year before was a thousand as well. So it's two, nearly three thousand home unit housing units have disappeared off the off the bloody books. Why? Because they've been given, given, not sold, given to private enterprise. They then go and build a block of units, and then give all the ones that are facing the wrong way. They're really hard to sell. That's the one they house people in. The one they're building down Bay Street, the rooms are two metres by bloody three, one and a half metres wide. And they've got a kitchen, which you call a kitchenette anywhere, anywhere else, and a bathroom. Where are they going to store their stuff? Oh, you shouldn't have stuff if you know, you, you live in a public housing. At least you've got a roof over your head. Yeah, you know, bullshit. It's just, I, I'm so angry. And My grandparents... Housing isn't actually affordable. Like, if, if you're on youth allowance for example, you can't afford to live in affordable housing, so where do you go? You've yeah, got to you've got to go and live in a freaking youth service where every aspect well, of your life is one. controlled and approved of or disapproved of and you've got to comply with the rules or you get kicked out onto the in streets. Youth services sold off all the houses they had. They had a whole stack of hostels, they had a whole stack of houses. They liquidated the assets 
then turned it over to private enterprise. What happened to all those assets? What happened to all the money? I went in the superannuation for the workers because they hadn't been paying their super. You know, and it goes on and on and on. And basically what it is is stripping out public assets and handing them over to private enterprise. And if you want to find out about it, you go online, you go to Papua New Guinean government, who's the only government in the world that's had the balls to print the IMF's conditions, which is privatise everything, including schools, hospitals, everything's privatised, even though it's totally against the grain of Australia. After World War II, they insisted that these things were done. My grandfather and my old man and his brother, grandfather's brother, they helped build Hornsby Hospital. They actually physically went and carted timber there, gave it to them for nothing. Years later, it was a community-based hospital, it was a community-run hospital, by the community, for the community. They had a great idea, we'll get you more finance if you hand it over to the state government. They got handed over to the state government, and now they want to go and have half the hospital as private. The same with bloody um, Royal North Shore. North Shore Hospital was the same. You know, that was built by the community for the community, and now it's 50-50. They use the resources of the, the hospital, the pathology, the x-ray, the CAT scanners, everything else, and they've got their private hospital which they charge people extra for uh, using those facilities. Uh, rip off. The whole thing's a rip off. A roar. The free market will not provide, the free market will just steal everything. Well, the free market's about ready to crash. We've seen it. The free market's just about to go into free fall. And, you know, everyone's ignoring it. It's like, oh, well, you know, it'll be all right, we'll muddle on and we'll fix it. Well. <laughs> Sure that consumer confidence oh, you is okay. Oh, consumer confidence up. Oh, <laughs> useless things for, you know, not worth two bob. At least it's giving people in the third world a job. You know, we got so much, you don't have to buy anything. You just go around to rubbish chuckouts and you can furnish a bloody complete house out of them. Yeah. I've got a mob at the moment called Piermont Care. For years I've been saying, you know, we have to get in those basements and get that stuff for the homeless and you know, the people who have been moved into public housing because they move in with nothing. They've got a mattress on the floor and newspaper over the windows. But why can't they just take all that stuff? Well, the message got through after three or four years. The corporate bodies got together. They talked to each other. Good idea. It'll save money on, on rubbish chuck out. You know, instead of paying someone to cart it away, then they can give it away. And they'll get brownie points for it, which is real good. And it's a really good idea. Yeah, I, I give them credit for it. You know, they're going to furnish people's houses for it out of out of stuff which you and I call luxury items. And it's it's bloody ridiculous. You got people who throw things out after three months because oh, if you haven't used it for three months, you've got to throw it out. You know, it's only cluttering up the place. Go to Balmain sometime, and we'll go to Northbridge. Mossman, yeah, go around there and you, you can furnish a house, you can get a whole new cutlery set, might it's a knife or a fork here and there, but you know. Oh no, we decided we wanted to update so we chucked it out. Fine. How about chucking it towards people who need it? I've seen them just, just totally demolish perfectly usable good luxury items, crush them in the back of the truck. There's people out in the western suburbs who are living with newspaper over their windows, because 78% of their, the average, uh, according to the Bureau of Statistics, the average Australian household on a mortgage is paying 78% of their income on mortgages. That's average. So there's people who aren't paying that much and there's people who are paying you know, 120% of their, uh, and now we're getting all these people turfed out because they've been overextended. They're maxed out the credit cards. You got an idiot like one I got near me. She was $1,000 in debt, couldn't pay it, so she went to the bank to try and work it out, and they extended the credit to $3,000. She couldn't pay that, so they extended to $6,000 now. So every cent she earns, she goes and pays it, and then she gets money out to buy her food. And half the time it's like, oh, well, I haven't got any food this week. And it's like, oh, yeah, haven't you? Well, I've got a fridge full. I've got a cupboard full. Because I buy it on special. I freeze it. I store it. And half the time I'll give it away to other people because I've got too much of it. 
as I badge it and I manage well. You know, it's just, it's just an un, out of kilter world at the moment, totally out of kilter. And these palookas coming around here, oh, I'm a tough copper. Oh, you, you blokes to bloody move on. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, well, wait till their son and daughter gets it. Wait till their bloody wife gets booted out of the job. You know? Oh, yeah, we've got two incomes. We make, you know, 100,000 a year plus. So we're not worried. Yeah, well, you will be when your bloody riots start. When all the other shit that social dislocation causes. Now, what's the program tonight in America? There's a whole street full of houses that are empty. People got thrown out of them. Now they're selling them for $5,000. Well, why didn't they rent, why didn't they drop the bloody charges instead of bankrupting the poor bastards? Why didn't they drop their mortgage payment where they could pay it and then they could still have a roof over their head? You know, over bloody close on 250,000 people every night in America are living in tent cities. And they've got a job. They've got a bloody job to go to. Ridiculous. No, oh, no, we're all right in this country. Yeah, it's just, you know, if you can't pay your way, well, you mustn't be doing things right. Bloody ridiculous. Yes, well, that's my diatribe.